G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well it's Friday here in Australia and if you're anything like me, you're waiting to see. Are we going to have a weekend retracement? We normally do. And if so, is it going to be a good buying opportunity? I was looking at this only like maybe 10-15 minutes ago and it was $1.59 trillion and now it's already $1.603 trillion. So the market is still growing. And there's gains to be found sort of all across the board. Altcoins that haven't pumped are pumping. Altcoins that did already pump are sort of having some retracements or just slowly ticking up. But overall, it's still just a growing space. So for me, I am just waiting to sort of see, again, is there going to be a weekend retracement? If so, is it going to be a good buying point? I've got cash on the side. I've had it there for a while and I haven't really deployed any of it. Because as always, I'm thinking there's going to be a bigger correction and sort of nothing uh, has come. And knowing my luck, when I finally do pull the trigger and go, yep, now's the time to buy, there'll be a massive correction after it. But hence why I'd never put all my cash in at the one time. I'd put maybe 50% of it in. If it drops some more, I put 50% of what's left. If it drops some more, I keep putting 50% in until I get down to, well, eventually I'll find the bottom of the market. I'll never be able to put it all in because it'll always just be 50% of what I have available. All right, so let's have a look. 59% BTC dominance, ETH dominance, 13.7. All right, what's really pumped? Gas prices are still awful. And we're going to speak about this. This needs to get sorted really soon. And again, I've got an article that we'll look at. But what's really pumped? Last 24 hours, Ravencoin, Pancake Swap still going. MDEX, Venus, oh, I heard about this, it had quite a good run. Voyager token just continues to go up. So congratulations to anyone that got into Voyager token. I mean, it was under a dollar a while ago, and now it's over $5. And it looks like it's just going to continue to grow. Bancor Network, so great double-digit sort of gains here. Really nice gains. And piled on top of what has been really good gains for these other coins as well. Now, let's have a look, though. What about losses? Is anything really lost? Terra, Sushi, Amp, Synthetics Network has been going down. So I am waiting to see if I can find a good buy point to get into Synthetics Network. I'm still super bullish on it. People are just taking profits, and I completely understand that. I did say in my video the other day, I am super bullish on Synthetics Network, but I just didn't know if it was the best price to get back in. So I will be waiting to see. I'll probably do a chart analysis on it in the next few days uh, and find where I think might be a good buying point because I'd definitely like to get some more Synthetics. Cosmos, we've got some really big news for Cosmos, so I might actually go and buy some more Cosmos. But look, all these gain, all these losses, sorry, they're pretty small losses. They're not really too bad, you know, 7%, even 12% over seven days, considering how much Synthetics Network has gone up, is not that bad. So, all right, we've seen the losses, we've seen the gains. Let's have a quick look at the chart. So here's Bitcoin. It's still following this line. Now it is having a bit of a retracement. So is this an early weekend retracement? Or is it just the start again of a sort of bigger retracement? Or is this literally it being done and now we're about to pump uh, you know, to the upside? I'm not sure if Bitcoin's really ready to do a big pump to the upside over a weekend just yet, but hey, we'll have to wait and see. All right, let's get on to the news stories. I've taken a neutral view on Bitcoin, says Bill Gates. I don't, it, I don't own Bitcoin, I'm not short Bitcoin, so I've taken a neutral view, said Gates. Bitcoin can go up and down just based on the mania or whatever the views are. I don't have a way of predicting how that will progress. And look, no one really does in all fairness. We're all taking a bit of a guess, uh, but I'm glad he's not short on it, although, you know, if he was, he probably wouldn't want to say that because then everyone would just do the opposite. And sometimes, you know, influencers, even though he might not consider him consider himself really a big influencer in cryptocurrencies. He's just a, a tech influencer in general. So if he was to say he's bullish on something, he can guarantee the price will probably fly up. But then again, maybe if he says he's bearish on something, it'll really push it down as well. So, But either way, interesting that he doesn't have a stance on it. Considering he's like a big tech guy, I am surprised that he didn't get into Bitcoin a long time ago. And he has said some unfavorable things about Bitcoin in the past. So we'll wait and see whether he's, you know, his stance stays like that, particularly Microsoft, whether they stay like that as well. All right, the graph, a project I absolutely love, 
And again, I'm, I'm waiting for there to be some kind of pullback and I'd love to buy some more. Uh, I did sell some graph, but I basically got all my money back and some profit and didn't even sell too much. So yeah, love the graph. And look, more bullish news. The graph adds support to Polkadot, Near, Solana and Celo. So I did bring a story about this the other day that they were going multi-chain. Following its mainnet launch on Ethereum in mid-December 2020, the graph has today announced that it is integrating Polkadot, Near, Solana and Celo. As reported, the graph is a protocol that enables programmers to build application programming interfaces, which are called subgraphs, that can query and index blockchain data. So normally if you want to you know, get blockchain data, you've got to go through the big silos of Facebook, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and sort of things like that. And look, they don't just freely give it out and it's not freely available. Available. There's usually a price uh, and you don't know, you know if you're getting the true data or not because they own it all. Decentralized data is a much better idea. That's why I really, really like the idea of the graph. The graph already supports blockchains Ethereum, IPFS, and POA, and supports the interplanetary file system, a peer-to-peer -peer network of storing and sharing data. Many of the existing subgraphs, over 7,000 in total, are already being deployed by the developers of popular decentralized applications built on Web.3. Uh, web yeah, 3.0. Among them, Uniswap, Aave, Decentraland, and Synthetix. Now that Polkadot, Near, Solana, and Celo have been integrated, the graph is also aiming to expand support to Bitcoin, Cosmos, Avalanche, Binance, Smart Chain, Flow, and others. Ethereum will continue to be the standard of the graph network and its native token, uh, GTR, which developers receive when users pay uh, users qu query their subgraph. Now this will remain an ERC20 token. All right, some big uh, Cosmos news. And again, we're talking about Cosmos just here. Uh, I love where this is all going. You know, it was all really walled garden. Bitcoin could only do Bitcoin. Ethereum could only do Ethereum. You know, that's the way it was for such a long time. You know, XRP could only do XRP. But we now really are moving into that multi-chain kind of thing. And most projects now are going to have that ability to go onto other chains. You know, things like Polygon, which used to be Matic, going multi-chain. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Now here for Cosmos. So Cosmos launches Stargate, paving the way for interoperable DeFi applications. After months of development, the Cosmos, or Atom project, has launched the Stargate update, which includes the highly anticipated Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol, or IBC. Announced on Thursday, the Stargate upgrade includes a series of improvements to the Cosmos protocol and its software development kit. The most important of Stargate's features is IBC, so the interoperability layer of Cosmos blockchains. The protocol is one of the key elements of the Cosmos vision, allowing for effortless interoperability between Cosmos, Cosmos SDK blockchains and other blockchain protocols. IBC allows bridging tokens and arbitrary data between all blockchains it supports, primarily those built with the Cosmos SDK. Other blockchains can also be supported, but they are required case-by-case -case implementations. Now we go over here. So Cosmos chains can evolve into Polkadot parachains thanks to the new SDK. Cosmos developers will be welcoming the news that their chains can now connect with Polkadot's, Polkadot's substrate network of parachains with minimal effort. Until now, projects elected to build on Cosmos would have been forced to remain there, given the costs and time associated with migrating to a different blockchain and rebuilding from scratch. A new SDK from... I don't know how to say this... Adoria Soft promises to provide painless chain switching on demand allowing Cosmos chains to be repurposed as Polkadot parachains. Not only will Cosmos projects that make the switch be able to capitalize on Polkadot's enviable network effects and develop a community, but they will be freed from the burden of securing their own chain, which will be uh, projected by Polkadot's relay chain. So there's so much interoperability going on, it is so good. And really, you know, you don't hear much about uh, them connecting with Ethereum at the moment and a number of other things. You know, at first everyone was trying to connect with Ethereum and I'm sure there is some Ethereum connections going on, but it just seems they're all sort of, there's not a lot of news at least and I get the feeling like they're staying away from Ethereum at the moment. Yes, it has that network development, uh, 
you know, first mover advantage. But the fees are absolutely horrific on Ethereum. And I am truly worried that Ethereum is going to get left behind. Their layer two solutions just cannot come quick enough. And there's a perfect story over here. PancakeSwap brings whopping DeFi volumes to Binance Smart Chain. Oh, this is this is a worry. I mean, you know, the fees on Ethereum are just horrendous. So Binance BNB token is up 13% and into the top five cryptocurrencies by market cap as DeFi on Binance Smart Chain grows in popularity. Now, I don't hate Binance coin or anything like that, and I'm glad that they're doing well. But Ethereum, is they're just getting left behind. They really need to get this layer 2 and 2.0 stuff sorted very, very quickly. Or, you know, again, and I like Cardano. I'm invested in Cardano. I like Cosmos. I'm invested in them. I like Polkadot. I'm invested in them. I like Binance. I've invested in them. But Ethereum, they are just, they're going to lose so much marketplace if they really don't get these sorted out quick smart. All right. The tides are turning, and here's a perfect example why. Famous gold bull Jeffrey Gundlach says Bitcoin is a better investment. After calling Bitcoin a bubble earlier this year, the renowned gold bug has had a change of heart. He now considers Bitcoin as the stimulus asset while noting that it may be a better investment than gold. Well, maybe, and then it says it is a better investment than gold. So that's a little bit weird. But this shows you how perceptions are changing. You know, there's people out there who are, again, companies, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, you know, all Deutsche Bank, all these other big banks and, you know, financial people were so against Bitcoin and saying it was a bubble and it was going to go to zero and all this. And now all of a sudden we're in 2021. And I mean, it started in 2020 after the coronavirus uh, crash. All of a sudden, Blockchain is amazing and cryptocurrencies are amazing and everyone is just piling in. It really is the way of the future. All right. Bitcoin ETF, the one that came out in Canada the other day, it opens to a monster first day. 80 million in one hour. $80 million went into a Bitcoin ETF. And this is a Canadian one, so it's not even American and nothing against that, but it's a much smaller sort of market. 80 million in an hour. Wait until a US one gets approved. The price, the money that will flow into it and the prices will be unbelievable. That will blow people's minds. I have no doubt about that. Now, for the snakes uh, in the grass in the crypto space, US authorities take, take action to shut down crypto trading platform, allegedly defrauding thousands of investors. And look, again, I don't want there to be too much regulation, but we need to get rid of the bad eggs. New York Attorney General Letitia James took legal action Wednesday to shut down the cryptocurrency trading platform owned and operated by CoinSeed Inc. The lawsuit filed in New York's County State Supreme Court alleges that CoinSeed runs an illegally an illegally operating cryptocurrency trading platform that defrauded, defrauded thousands of investors across the nation out of more than $1 million. Now, innocent until proven guilty. So I'm not saying that these guys are guilty and are part of the bad seeds, but if they are, I'm all for this kind of stuff. We, we've got to get rid of the bad eggs that are doing bad stuff. And, you know, if, if they're innocent, then I hope they're proven innocent and everything, you know, gets sorted. But, gee, if they're guilty, uh, they, you know, they get what they deserve. All right. Bitcoin miner eBank closes 70 million follow-up public offering. So eBank shares closed 7.73% at $11.29 on the NASDAQ on Thursday. So basically what's happening here is institutional investors have agreed to purchase 14 million units at $5 per share, according to eBank's announcement. Each unit consists of one Class A ordinary share and one warrant to purchase one half of one class a ordinary share so the mining rigs obviously they're big business now everyone wants to get into bitcoin and yeah it's not surprising that people from more traditional finance who are still scared to get into you know cryptocurrency as the currency things like bitcoin and ethereum and that they're looking for other sort of secondary ways to get in so again bitcoin etfs they don't actually own the bitcoin don't have to store it and all the rest of it 
but they've got some skin in the game. You know, buying shares in companies that build miners, that are miners. This is, you know, the, the whole industry, I can't believe how fast it's growing. It does make me a little bit nervous, but also this is happening. It's growing at such a rate because it is getting that real world adoption. It was a very small space and still is a very small space. So really, while the growth can feel like it's parabolic, it's because it's finally starting to flourish. It's like, you know, when you grow something in the garden, you know, at first it just sprouts out and nothing too much happens. And then, you know, a first set of leaves and then a second, third, fourth, and it just goes on that fairly quick growth spurt to get it big enough so it can actually survive conditions and insects, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a bit of a random uh, sort of alignment, but that's what it reminds me of, something that grows. At first it pops out really slow and it takes a little bit, and then it really just starts to explode and grows really fast until it kind of gets to a point where then the growing slows down. It still continues to grow, but the growth is just much more slower and sort of sustained. It's not that explosive growth at first. And that is what we're seeing in the entire crypto space at the moment. Now, not everything's gonna last, not everything's gonna be here forever, but gee, there's some great projects out there that I just love and, you know, the graph, Polygon, Synthetics Network, Aave, oh, Ethereum, you know, Polkadot, Cosmos, the ones we've already spoke about. I do believe there's a place for all of them, Cardano, and I do believe they will all be able to do well. And you know, if you're in now, you will be an early investor, but we just need to remember, maybe not all of them do last. I think they definitely, I think there's space for them to all do well, but whether they do, and in the end, someone is going to take the mantle. Someone's gonna be the number one. It's Ethereum at the moment. If Ethereum can't get that, you know, layer two stuff sorted very quickly. I would say if they haven't got it sorted by the end of this year, Ethereum will really start to dump. It'll have massive problems. And again, things like Binance Chain, uh, you know, Tron, Cardano, Polkadot, Cosmos, all sorts of things. They will just quickly take over. All right, I wanted to show you a bit of a tweet. So Peter Schiff, I, I used to like him, you know, he's a gold bug, he gave some good advice. But now all he does is just try and FUD Bitcoin. He just cannot handle that he's wrong about it. And it's just garbage, rubbish, Twitter post after Twitter post about Bitcoin. So I'm gonna bring you over here. Bitcoin isn't money. In theory, it's a digital fiat currency, but in practice, it doesn't work. No, it's not a digital fiat currency at all. It can't be printed into oblivion. There is a fixed amount. When Bitcoin is occasionally exchanged for goods or services, transactions are more like barter. It's a digital token. That's about the only thing he's got right. It is a digital token. The price reflects what collectors or traders are willing to pay. That's the same as anything. You think about um, an Xbox or a PlayStation. They're only worth $1,000 or $900, you know, depending on where you are, because that's what people are willing to pay. If someone priced them at $4,000, most people wouldn't pay for it. That is everything. He just tries to, you know, manipulate the way he's trying to make things sound. So what I want is anyone who follows Peter Schiff uh, on Twitter or anywhere, if you see him talking this kind of rubbish, these are the hashtags. Now I came up with these. Hashtag what a load of shift. Hashtag talking pure shift. And hashtag shift talker. <laughs> and I think you can all find the pun in there. Uh, again, I still think he, he has some valid points about things, but just not when it comes to Bitcoin. He doesn't understand it. He can't, you know, he, he just refuses to admit that he's wrong about Bitcoin. And so, yeah, please, Put in these hashtags and put at 1MJ when you do it. So there's my Twitter thing there. So what a load of shift. And then at uh, my Twitter feed there, because uh, I would love him to know that I am personally sick of all this Bitcoin crap that he talks, because that's what it is. It's garbage. Almost none of it has any validity. All right. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. If I can ask just one favor, please go down below, click that like and subscribe button and the bell all icon so you get updates of when I bring out content and I bring out content daily. That's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. Things are still looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.